Now let's talk a bit more about the limit order book uh, that we already mentioned um, in the last video. And as we already mentioned, the limit order book uh, is, uh, so to say, a heart of an electronic exchange. It aggregates all limit orders on both the buy and uh, sell sides uh, at each price level. And price levels are measured in ticks, uh, which are elementary units uh, of price. And uh, as we already mentioned, in the U.S. market, the tick, uh, one tick is one cent. So, interestingly, uh, the real market price is actually quantized, uh, like in physics. And the true price dynamics are fundamentally discrete, which is uh, actually opposite to what is done in classical uh, quantitative finance. Because in these models, you usually uh, start with the continuous model and then discretize uh, it uh, for numerical implementation. Um, but that's a side remark. Uh, let's come back to the limit order book. And um, a good way to visualize it uh, with uh, diagrams uh, like the one uh, uh, shown here. We have uh, the buy side in blue uh, on the left and the sell side in red on the right. Uh, the position uh, of each bucket is a price level, uh, like a cent for the U.S. market. <clears throat> and the height of each bucket is the total quantity. The rightmost blue bar is the best buy uh, quote, which is called the bid price. And the leftmost red bar is the best sell quote, which is called the ask price. And the gap or difference between them is called the bid-ask spread. And as you can see, the gap is always non-zero. So when a trader uh, uh, does an actual trade, uh, uh, he or she crosses the spread. Uh, this means that the trader will pay the ask price if buying or, or get a bid price uh, if selling. The main function of the limit order book is to aggregate orders and implement a matching mechanism. And to understand how it's done, uh, let's talk again about two types of orders in the uh, LOB. So, when a limit order arrives, it's first placed in a bucket corresponding to its uh, price level. And if there are other orders with the same price level, all orders are organized uh, as a queue. A queue is essentially a structure uh, or a data type uh, in computer science that has two points, a point of entry and the point of exit. And therefore, queues are often called uh, first in, first out, or uh, FIFO structures. A simple analogy within everyday life uh, is when you call customer support uh, of, say, your utility uh, provider a company. At uh, this point, you are put at the end of a queue of customers that wait to be served. And uh, you wait until other customers' uh, calls are answered. So, a new limit order will sit in the LOB uh, until it's executed by matching a market order uh, from the opposite side. And alternatively, it can get cancelled at any time. It, in case the order waits for a match, the first execution price uh, is known, but the execution time is uncertain. And if the price level in order is very close to the current bid-ask spread, it will be executed very quickly. But on the other hand, if it's too far from the current bid-ask spread, uh, such order may sit uh, long in the LOB. Alternatively, the initial price level can be close to the current uh, bid-ask spread, but the market itself can move away from that level. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, market quotes. Uh, a market order is an order to buy a certain quantity X of the asset at the best available price, as we said. So, what happens when the limit order book, uh, with the limit order book, with, when uh, such market order arrives? The first thing that happens is that uh, dealers will start trading on behalf of the trader that submits this uh, market order. And the first share or the first block of shares will be traded at the bid-ask uh, spread. But the remaining part will be traded at some uh, ticks up or down. And this is because both the current trade and other trades by other participants will move the execution price away 
very quickly. And therefore, the final cost per share uh, would be uncertain uh, with such market orders. And the uncertainty will depend on the size of the trade, trade uh, the state of the LOB, and actions of other participants. Now, it might happen that as a result of market orders and cancellations, a bid or ask Q uh, will be depleted. And in this case, the price will be uh, simply updated to the next price level. This will constitute the actual price uh, moves of the stock. And as I showed in uh, tables in the previous video, this happens all the time, uh, many thousands of times a day. Now let's talk about what happens with the opposite side of the LOB uh, when a market order, uh, say a sell order, arrives. In this case, buyers are uh, served according to uh, priority rules, a price priority and a time priority. The price priority rule is that the, base, the best price is always executed first. And the time priority is that uh, if I fall rule, uh, of a queue that uh, we already mentioned. Uh, now let's talk about cancellations. Agents uh, can cancel their orders, so if uh, the order of value X is cancelled, then a queue size is reduced by X. If either of the size of the LOB uh, is depleted as a result of market orders and cancellations, the price will move up or down the next level. And it turns out the vast majority of limit orders, sometimes up to 95%, is cancelled. Therefore, if we only look into actual trade events, we might miss some important features of the LOB. The paper by Rama Quant and co-workers looked into the importance of using non-trade data called event data from the LOB to study impact on prices. Um, here is one example of a simple LOB that I borrowed from the blog uh, referenced on this slide. Uh, in this example, the current best bid is 17.33 uh, and the current bid, uh, best ask is 17.35 and we want to buy 200 shares. So let's assume that we uh, bought uh, the first 80 shares for 17.35. Uh, uh, this produces uh, an immediate execution uh, and now the LOB has only 8, 80 stocks left for 1735. So now we have 80 stocks and we need 120 more. So uh, we can put a limit order for 120 stocks at the price of 17.34. And after a while nothing happens uh, as no one wants to trade with us at this price. Um, so uh, we cancel this order um, and now the LOB uh, looks uh, like that. There are still remaining uh, 80 stocks for a uh, grab for, uh, for 17.35. So we buy these 80 stocks for 17.35 and uh, now we have 160 stocks, uh, which is short of our uh, target of 200 stocks. Um, because uh, the queue is now depleted, so we buy remaining 40 stocks for the next best price of 17.37. So this is a simple visualization of uh, mechanics of the LOB. And in the next video, uh, we will talk about modeling of the LOB.